I'm Miss Kim, the art instructor at the Music Connection in Orland Park, and I'm excited to teach you today's lesson, a trick-or-treat sign. So let's begin. Here I have the sign with a twine um, hook hanger. I bought it ready-made. Now I don't have another wood sign, but you will do the same thing I'm doing on the mixed media paper as you would on the sign. The only difference is there's a little bit of a dip in here. And all I did was just dip down into there with the markers. This is a little darker stain. Um, you might have to add a little more color and let it dry and then add another amount of color like we go. So I kind of did a couple layers to get them this color. I would say two or three applications. I have these Fly C is a brand name, acrylic painter, marks on anything, it's water-based. And so you just take it off and throw out the plastic and then you open it up and you have to activate the paint by pushing down on the tip like so, and it'll bring the paint out. Here's mixed media pad 11 by 14. This is a little smaller than the sign, but I'm gonna show you how to draw the trick or treat in this. You also wanna shake your paint in your marker. You can hear it and press it down, like I said, a couple times to activate the paint. I'm gonna do the trick or treat this would be just like you would do on the wood, okay? I'm gonna start with making the T, and I'm just doing it a little bit on a diagonal. I think it's more interesting. And so I'm doing the word trick up here. So T, then capital letter R, style, R. Make sure you do the inside part of that R. I did make a little piece of candy on top because trick-or-treating, you get your candy on Halloween, which is fun. And if you're not doing trick-or-treating that this year, you can, I'm sure you have a party or enjoy it at home in, in so many ways you can enjoy the holiday and have fun at home even, do fun games. All right, and then a C. And then a K. And you could um, pause the video and come back and rewind if you need to do these letters. Then I come down here and right between the R and the I, I put like the O, which is more like a pumpkin shape. So that's what I'm going to go for, like create that pumpkin-y look to my O. And I'm going to put a little stem right now, so don't forget, that's our pumpkin, with the, o, the circle in center for the O, and then an R on an angle like I did on my wood sign. And yes, this is my original artwork. I didn't find this anywhere else. All right, and here's a T. Here's the capital R version of the R. An E. A. and the T. Okay. Then I'm gonna put the cap on this and I'm gonna make my little Halloween tree over on the side here. I'm gonna pretend my sign is this wide on my paper. All right, so I'm gonna make the tree come up and just kind of make squiggly lines going up for the branches. Think Halloween, they're a little jagged and it's fall and all the leaves are off and already off the tree and falling onto the wall. We're, um, lawn. So just kind of think like that. And then you bring another one up this way, create those eerie branches from your tree. Okay. And behind the tea makes it interesting. Okay, and then I'm just going to take my black marker and just kind of do these crazy lines like it's the bark of the tree. And I'm going to leave some white in between because I'm going to use brown too to create how the um, bark is rough and bumpy. 
And that's how the, you suggest it by doing it this way. Okay. There's, and you don't have to do your branches exactly how I have them, but you're getting the idea how to create the tree. All right, now I'm going to take a brown marker out of my supplies. Um, be sure you get a brown one because there's a gold and there's a silver marker in there as well. It comes real close to, well, the, at least the gold one does. Here's the brown marker. I'm going to push down on it to activate the paint. And then I'm going to go back into the tree. And where the white is, I'm going to kind of color in. So it get, the black kind of acts as the shadows within parts of the tree's bark. And so that makes it more realistic rather than just painting, coloring it all brown, flat. I mean, you can, but it, this makes it more interesting. It gives it more dimension, suggests the texture and the appeal of rough wood on the tree. Just kind of fun. You can leave some white in the background, it's okay. So I'm gonna put that to the side. Now I'm gonna go with um, purple, this light purple. Oh, I'm sorry, not the light one, the dark purple I'm gonna go with. That's gonna be the background hills. So I'm making a little hill back here and up here, like I have in my picture up here, and by the pumpkin and by the R. This is all resting on the ground like it's showing and under the R here. No particular um, approach. And then just go ahead and color in and leave it kind of where there's line showing like I did above too. And you just do it like this. It makes it more eerie and a little jagged. You think Halloween more. Okay. And just color all that in with your marker, your paint marker. And you get to explore working with paint markers on other surfaces, uh, wood or paper. This media paper is thick and it can withstand the paint on the marker. And you get to use this product and you can make other things like paint on a mug and let it dry. All right, I'm going to put that to the side. Now I'm going to make um, my ghost. So I'm going to take the yellow. Or you know what? I'm going to make the moon. I'm going to come up here and I'm going to go ahead and make my moon. I'm going to go around and around of the yellow. And there's some white showing and that's okay. Because there's other colors I'm going to be layering. Now I'm going to go in with a blue. Shake up that blue. I think a darker blue. Yes. The darker blue for the clouds up above is what I'm going to do next. I'm shaking that paint up. I'm going to activate the paint by pressing down. And then I'm going to make my clouds. And it's just puffy. Um, real simple. Okay. And then just go ahead and color those in a little bit. You're going to overlap with another blue. And a black later, so leave some white showing. And that's it, like that. Okay, let that dry before you put another color. And then we're going to take the black marker. I'm going to create a bat here flying in the sky. He's kind of big. And I'm making his head here. And his little body. And then his little legs are hanging in the back as he's flying in the sky. And then over here, we're going to make the other bat wing. And then you're going to go down a couple times, like that. And some little things on top of his head. Like, and then we're going to go ahead and just put lines like this and connect them to create that bat-like wing. And I'm just coloring it in a little bit. And I'm going to come back with another color, so you could do some of the black right now. As you can see, I put a little silver in there just that'll make it more interesting and eerie. All right, let's go back with the orange and color our trick-or-treat words in. So I'm going to just color them in like this. See, you don't have to take a long time. You're gonna put other layers of color on there too. 
and that makes it really fun and interesting. In your candy wrapper, it's wrapped like a bubblegum piece wrapped in paper over the eye because we trick or treat and get all that good candy. I hope you guys have a fun holiday. Dress up and just have fun, whether it's being at home and, and having a little party or ordering a little pizza or making pizza and, you know, making, having some treats, maybe some candy, draw, watch a fun movie. Halloween comes kind of fun. And just have a good time. All right, and I'm going all the way around the letters, filling in the letters with orange because it's a popular color for Halloween. You think pumpkins. And I'm doing the pumpkin, actual pumpkin shaped O for the or right now, as you can see. These markers are so nice to work with. They get, there's a lot of ink in them and it's so nice that you could paint on all kinds of surfaces with this particular marker brand. All right, next I think I'm gonna go with this yellow and see where the white spots are on the trick or treat. I'm just gonna kind of fill in and overlap because we're gonna put layers and layers of color. So just do that with each letter and if some white's showing, it's okay because we're gonna do other colors yet. And the candy. Just a little bit like that. Isn't this fun? And I love that you can use all these fun colors. It makes you think of all the colors of candy wrappers. At least I thought so. And I wanted to make the letters look like they're kind of shaking. I think by the way the lines are designed on my picture, or on my sign here, it creates that look like they're almost shaking, quivering from fear or from the night sky and the bats and the, the ghosts. It's kind of eerie, but fun. Okay, and I'm doing the E. Make sure you leave that open white spot by the E. Don't color it in. And the A now, same thing. Don't color that space and the T. Okay. Then I'm going to put that marker down and I think I'm going to go with this lime green is what I use for the ghosts. Shake it up and it's kind of a, a thin, like you can see how it looks here on the paper plate. So I'm going to make a ghost head by making it round and then make a little arm coming like that and over here a little arm and then you're going to pretend to follow through, but not put it by the, uh, on top of the tree and continue with its tail like that. And then you just color them in with the green. Now on the wood, I had to do a couple applications because the wood kind of sucks up the um, pigment or the ink from your marker. So you might have to just do a couple um, applications. So you do one application let it dry, and then come back to it. So I did one, two, three ghosts. You would let them dry, and then you start from the beginning and, and keep adding the color till you get what you want. And then I'm gonna make a head here for this ghost. I think they're kind of friendly ghosts, actually, these guys. They're just kind of fun, though. They're just trying to be funny and silly. All right, and then I'm making the tail coming through the pumpkin O, and I'm coloring in my ghost. and his little arms. Now I'm gonna make one more ghost and his tail's here right by the R and his arms are gonna come here, his head and his arm. And it's not exactly like the one up above and that's okay. As long as we're right in the ballpark, that's all that matters. Okay, and then just color him all in. And then I'm gonna let those dry. Once they're dry, like I said, if in the wood, if you have to put another application so that the color comes through better. And once you have done that, then you can go in with the black a little later. We're gonna let that dry for a bit. 
All right, let's make our way back up to the um, clouds, and I'm going to do a um, lighter blue like this and shake it up and take the cap off, put it on the back, and push it down to activate it again. And then I'm going to just go ahead and color within the clouds the light blue. No particular approach, just kind of big clouds and fluffy. That's it. That's all you're doing. You're going around the, the big bright moon. So you don't want to color over the moon with the blue. This is just for the clouds. All right, we're going to cap that. I'm going to go for a little bit of a darker blue. And then we'll go back in and just uh, activate it first. And just put some squiggles again. Just a few, just to kind of give it another layer of color. Cap it. All right, we will do a little light pink. Shake, shake, shake. Activate it. I'm going to put a little pink within the candy up here like that. Get some squiggles and that's it. I'm going to come over here. I'm going to do a little within the moon. And I know there's no such thing as a pink moon. But guess what? There's going to be other layers we're going to put in. So don't worry. And that's how I'm making my moon. Setting that down. Let things dry. I think I'm going to go in with the black now with the ghosts. I have plenty of green on my ghosts. So I'm going to outline them just a little bit on the edge, just so you can really see them. See, like that. And then I'm going to put a dot here long, a dot here long, and then a little bit of a shaped mouth. Ooh, saying boo. Again, I'm going to outline this ghost. And his, he's coming through the pumpkin. Uh, oh, and then I'm going to do his eyes, like so. And his mouth is a little shaped to say he's saying boo. And one more, um, one more ghost. And eyes. And his mouth. And there you go. I'm going to make my way over here to this pumpkin O, and I'm going to outline the pumpkin O to make it look like a pumpkin. And even the inside. And I'm going to put some lines like pumpkin has that shape just a little bit it doesn't have to be lined all the way through just a little bit and then the stem I'm going to do a little circle and lines and that's it for the stem go back and do over the R and you're going to go around to draw the R in so you can see it a little better and like so you're going to continue to do all the letters and this is where we'll fast forward the video to do that And there will be my treat, the trick, I'm sorry. All right, so that outlines all of them. And you can do your candy wrapper as well. I just do some squiggles, squiggles of lines to suggest a candy wrapper. All right. Now you notice my T has this wider part of it, and it's like a scribble. So I'm going to just do that around each letter to give it like some interesting movement and like it's shaking and quivering the letters. That's all you're going to do is like a little scribble line around each letter. There's no scientific approach, just scribble. It just brings it out a little more and makes it more interesting and spooky. It has a little character to it, your letters.
fun to work with the markers. And then even the uh, clouds, I'm going to just outline a little bit with the black. And if it goes into the blue, it's okay. And then on this side as well, might have to activate some more ink. I feel like it's drying up a little bit. Oop. There you go. Okay. All right. So we're going to continue. Oh, I'm like, O, the pumpkin O. Scribble around it. Darken the inside of this O a little bit like that. Scribble around this pumpkin of the O. Now they are. I'm darkening here. And then this T. Scribble, scribble. Cap the black, and I'm going to see what other colors I have left in here. All right, so I think I'm going to go with this gray. Grayish, kind of green. Grayish green, I guess you could say. And I'm going to activate it, and then I'm going to just go in and kind of go around where the black was on the letters and just do a little bit, not a lot, just a little bit around each letter. You don't even have to go all the way around the letter, just little parts of it, little accent. I plan on using all the colors. Then I'm going to go into the bat, because he's gray and black. There we go, just to add a little color in there on him. Okay, then I'm going to go into this light lavender color, shake it up, Front, uh, prep it by pushing down, and then I'm going to go ahead and color a little bit into the letters like so. And I'm just making fun little scribbles in there. Follow the shape of the letter and just scribble a little bit, not the whole thing, a little bit in your candy. In each letter so it's all unified <coughs> in your design it'll all tie in if you go over the black it's kind of cool a little effect but don't do too much just a little and around your uh, moon see how neat that is kind of looks like a graffiti like a funky graffiti is what I was thinking while I was designing this and you're going to do a little light purple within the dark purple here. That'll give another layer of color and interest for the ground. Just a little bit. Not every little white spot needs to be colored. Just kind of go over it. That's all you got to do. All right, let's go for this light blue green, like a light aqua blue. Prep it. And again, keep doing what I was doing, just scribbling with the letters. In your candy. See how funky and colorful it's becoming? And don't forget your pumpkin. I know there's not a lot of blue in it, but it all will tie in later when you put other colors in it, you'll see. That's all you're doing, is a little scribble. See, you don't have to worry about having it just so. And then a little bit in your moon. All right. Let's go for a dark witchy green. Shake it up, prep it, and let's dive in. Some more scribbling. Witchy. Witchy green, I'm calling this. I think you'll like this, my pretties. Caramel apples are fun to eat at this time of year, too. So that can be kind of fun on 
Halloween if you don't do the trick-or-treating. Okay, and you keep going around to each letter and a little bit on the pumpkin, maybe in the stem a little bit. See that? That's all there is to it. Let's go pour a red. Shake it up, prime it, and jump in. I'm going to do the candy first. I'm feeling the candy right off the bat. And then we're going to go into the letters, and it can be within the letter, the orange. Don't they look like they're shaking these letters? I'm scared. They're like scaredy pants. On Halloween, you can make stuff and it's like so forgiving on design and then just a little bit in that moon. We'll go back in with some white and yellow later. All right, how about a light gray? Let's go for that. Prime it. I'm just going to do a little bit of gray. Oh, this is a silver. I'm sorry. It looks like a gray. It is a silver metallic. So in my image up here, I'm going to start with the clouds. I just did a little bit of hints of it. That's it. Not a lot. And then the bat, I just did the top of the bat, like the moon is lighting him up a little bit. I did a little on each letter just to brighten it up a little. And in between, here I squiggled some here in the letter, inside the letters, if you want, like so. And I just am highlighting a little bit, not a lot. Kind of funky and fun. Okay, cap it. Let's go for a hot pink. Prime it and color. Color inside the letter T now in the R. Swear the orange is more. Because it's a light color and it'll pop right out in the candy. There's really no wrong. I want candy. I want candy. I love candy. And then the moon. All right, let's grab a yellow marker and shake it up. Prime it. And I'm going to go ahead and go right over my moon quite a bit. And I'm going to take some, like, make sure there's no color sticking onto that yellow. And then I'm just going to go ahead and do some more accent. Not a lot, just a little. Little squiggles here and there. All on the letters. And move on to the next color. Let's see. We have a few colors left. We're going to go with the light green. Prime it. Just a little hint of that. Maybe a little in your ghosts. I'm not doing much at all. I'm just putting a little bit of this in. But make sure you get a little bit throughout and then cap it. Let's get this gold and shake it up. It's a metallic gold and little highlights again. Not a lot. There. And maybe even a little in the moon. Why not? Okay, we have how many colors left? Let me pour them out of the box. We just have four more. All right, so we'll go with a dark gray. Prime it. Add a little scribble wherever you'd like. We're coming to the end of the project. Put a little color into your bat. Little in these letters. And that's all you need, just a little bit, or maybe a little in the ground, just a little. Okay, cap it. This light, like almost vanilla ice cream color. Again, just a little color on top of all the letters. 
All right, cap it. Let's get this purple. Shake it up, prime it, and mix. Do the bottom again of the land. The back on the hills. All right. How's that? And maybe just a tiny bit in your letters, just to suggest. And I put little squiggles, like snaky, long squiggles, too, because it makes it kind of interesting, like snakes are around. Okay? And then last but not least, white. Yeah, white. Prime it and put it in the moon. That's more looking like a moon. And then just little highlights throughout your piece. Not a lot. Little squiggles. Maybe a little on your ghosts on their heads, a little on the bat. And I have just used all the colors in my 24 count box. Voila! It's possible. There they are. What I would suggest, you can look at it, let it dry, and if you want to go back in with any other colors, pick whatever marker and do a little more. But there you have it. I hope you have a wonderful holiday, and this is Miss Kim signing off. Bye for now. Happy Halloween trick-or-treat.